So in this lecture we're going to cover how to calculate the power for the type of data we would evaluate by a t-test. So the learning objective is to know that a true difference is not always statistical detectable due to the sample size. Understand that statistical power depends on sample size, effect size, and the uncertainty in the data. Then be able to make reasonable assumptions and estimate the power for an experimental design for t-test type data. So what we're dealing with is that we are prior or pre to, we want to conduct a trial and we basically do not know how many samples we want to include. But the thing we're going to do is we're going to go out to a population and we're going to draw some samples from it. And based on these samples, we're going to calculate some statistics, mean variation especially, and then we're going to make inference about the population, since so saying, well, based on these samples, we can talk about the population here. And we want to know what is the statistical power of our trial, and how can we enhance it in order to be able to make inference that are correct. And in this way, and in in Correct in this sense means that we are able to confirm differences if they are actually there in the data. So here's an example. I have a hypothesis about that males and females are not of the same height, and I want to make an experiment where I compare the heights of five males and five females. Then I do that and conclude by the test um, that there is no difference between the height of males and females. The problem here is that there's simply too low a number of males and females uh, in order to tell something about height, basically because even though there is differences between the two, there's also very high variation within each of these two populations. So the power of this trial is too low and resulting um, p-value of a test from it is that it's um, non-significant. So we have these two types of errors. We have the type 1 error, which is where we reject the null hypothesis um, when there is indeed a difference. And then we have the other type of error, which is where we accept the null hypothesis where there is indeed a difference. So this is type, two, type 1 error and this is type 2 error false positive and false negative. So here is a schematic representation where we see the distribution under the null hypothesis and sometimes we will hit a difference based on data which is above a critical value and we will say well there is evidence based on data to reject the null hypothesis and we say well there is a difference which is wrong which we can see from this one where the null hypothesis is true. On the other hand, we can have an alternative hypothesis being true, and sometimes we will end up by having data which is below this critical value, and we will wrongly um, accept the null hypothesis, and we will end up by concluding a false negative result, a type 2 error. So this one is controlled, the type 1 error is controlled by choosing a conservative significant level, and this one is controlled by having enough samples. So here is some intuition on the ingredients for the power calculation for a t-test. Here we have the same standard deviation, but different difference in means. So um, there is the same standard deviation for all the four boxes here, but the difference over here is larger than here. So we will see, well, it's probably more easy to conclude differences here than here. On the other hand, we can have the same difference in means. There's the same difference from here to here as from here to here in means, but different standard deviation. So the standard deviation here is low and high over here, and we will conclude that it's probably more easy to find a difference here compared to here, even though that the, the effect size, the difference in means, are the same. Here we have the same standard deviation, the same means, but a different number of samples. And if we have very many samples, we will say, well, it's probably more easy to conclude that there is a difference here. But over here, there is simply 
not very high data support for any test and it's hard to figure out whether the, there is a difference between the means. In order to be able to calculate the power for a t-test, we need to know what the t-test is. So this is the model for the t-test. We have two distributions, one arm here, x11 up to x1n1, and we assume that it's normally distributed by a mean and a variance. The same goes for the second arm. The test here, if we have data, we take the mean of the two groups, subtract them from each other, and divide by this measure of a pooled variance, a pooled standard deviation, and then scale by this factor, which pretty much tells you how much data support there is from the two arms. And then this, this value here is translated into a p-value based on this distribution, the t-distribution with some degrees of freedom being larger than the observed t-value here. So the null hypothesis is that we assume that the two are, are, are equal to each other, the two means are equal to each other, and the alternative is that we assume that they are different. The first thing you should do is you should set an expected difference. So what do you assume prior to doing the test that the mean in the one sample and the mean in the other sample, the two arms, especially the difference between the two, what would you expect them to be? Further, you should make a choice on what the standard deviation in the populations are, sigma 1 and sigma 2. And usually what you would do is you will assume those two guys to be the same. But you have to figure out what the number for it is. Then you estimate the distribution of the test statistics, that is how is T ups distributed, and you calculate the power. So this is the data that we assume to get. We have x11 up to x1n, and it's distributed, normally distributed with a mean and a variance. And then the other arm goes in exactly the same way, just with another mean. Here we have assumed that the two variances are the same. And then the power calculation is, we are asking what should n be? in order to have high power. So that is the question here. So first of all, we are going to construct the test statistics. So the test statistics is equal to x bar 1 minus x bar 2 divided by this x pooled and then 1 over n plus 1 over n. So this one is x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by sp 2 over n. We do not know data, but we have an expectation, expectation on this guy. So we say, well, due to the central limit theorem, we know that this one is normally distributed with the difference here and if I don't know what the exact number of these ones are, I know that the expectation of it is the difference between the two means. So here is the difference between the two means. And then this one is scaled by this factor down here, which is the variance times 2 divided by n. And then because I divide by the variance, I know that the variance for this guy is 1. So the t, the t statistics is normally distributed with this mean and this variance. When I know the t statistics, I can translate this into a p-value. And the p-value is the probability of t with some degrees of freedoms are larger than or equal to t ups, and then I multiply this one by 2 because I have an alternative hypothesis. Let me just write these ones up here. 
the null hypothesis is that they're equal to each other, and the alternative is that they're not equal to each other. Because of this one, not equal to, I multiply by 2 here, because I would have support for rejecting the null hypothesis in the case where this one is larger than this one, or when this one is larger than this one. So two parts of differences, you could say, supports uh, rejection, and that's why we put a two, a number two here. For this one, in order to be significant, this guy needs to be less than alpha. And that means that t ops should be larger than or equal to some critical value, t star. If alpha is equal to 0 0.05, then t star for a two-sided test is roughly 2. So in this case, let's just set it to 2.0. So having con conducted a number of t-tests, you would know that t-statistics is critical around the number 2. So if you observe a t-statistic larger than 2, you usually will observe a p-value less than 0 0.05. And if you observe a t-statistics less than 2, you will observe a p-value which is higher than 0 0.05. So this is the critical point where you go from having non-significance to significance. So the power of this one, so in order to calculate the power of this one, you would say, well, given that the alternative is true, that there is a difference, then what is the probability that this guy is larger than this guy? Well, as we know, this one is normally distributed with a mean and a variance. We could simply say, well, Let's just calculate this um, fraction. So I would have a normal, so this one is the distribution for T ops. At the center point here, we have the mean, which is this guy. And then it's have a variance of one. So if I have a critical value t critical here, what I need to calculate is the area above here. So how is this done? Well, I take um, the probability of t ops being larger than some value is 1 minus the probability, the cumulative probability of t ops being less than some value. And that we do by t critical minus the, the mean divided by this guy 2 over n. And this should be divided by the standard deviation, but as the standard deviation is 1, we do not need to do that. So let's make a small example. I assume that I have 10 samples, n equal to 10, in each arm. That the difference between the mean is 0 0.5, and that the standard deviation in each of the groups is 0 0.5. So now I can calculate this guy by chucking in all the information. So here is 2.0 minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 times, and then let's just revert this one, and it says 10 divided by 2. So this one is equal to 1 minus the standard normal distribution evaluated in the point 2 minus square root of 5. Which is equal to 1 minus this one evaluated at minus 0 0.23, which is equal to 0 0.56. Oh, 
or is it 59? 0.59. So this will be the power of a trial with n samples in each arm and the expected difference between the two arms of 0.5 and the standard deviation of 0.5. So if you're not satisfied with this number, what you can do is you can change these numbers, especially you can say, well, we need more samples to be on the safe side, so tuning the n up to maybe 20. Or you could say, well, I choose my groups in such a way that I will boost this guy, or I choose my groups such that they are more homogeneous in order to lower this guy. The two later parts changing these ones might not be that trivial, but it's pretty trivial, though costly, to just include more uh, volunteers or samples in the trial.